not only discovered this rubbed out signature, but managed to read it using infrared photography and found that it was a would-be signature of Li Tong. And immediately these paintings were accepted by most of the scholars of Japan and quite a few uh, uh, abroad as important works of Li Tong. Well, this became a big uh, matter of controversy. I never, I myself never believed them because they don't belong in the style of Li Tong. I'm going to bring them back after we look at late Song, later Southern Song painting, particularly the work of Xiao Gui, and show that these must be post Xiao Gui works of the end of the Song Dynasty. Um, fine works and very much to be treasured and appreciated. But next please. It has a figure in the sort of far middle distance here in the lower, well, just below the branches of the tree. I don't, as I say, have a slide of the signature, but I used to say jokingly that the person who rubbed this signature out knew the style of Li Tong better than the person who wrote it in. Anyway, but it was, as I say, you know, it went on for years as a matter of controversy. The articles that had been written trying to salvage these paintings as genuine works of Li Tong would fill a book, a kind of misdirected book, because I think they're all going in a wrong direction. Um, well, one, one Japanese scholar, for instance, tried to extend Li Tong's period of activity much later so that it could somehow include these pictures. And what an American scholar, major, I won't name him because I think he was wrong, um, argued that Li Tong might have had two different styles, as Liang Kai, an artist we'll see later, had a fine style, academic style, and a rough, uh, looser style. And these would be the rough, looser style for Li Tong. Well, I think that person is now sort of recanted and come around to, to uh, putting them late, and so on. I think it gradually, uh, the uh, belief in them as, as uh, Li Tong works will die away. They belong, as I say, and I'll bring them back in the uh, late, uh, late, for the late Sung. Uh, here, let's see. Yeah, here, getting in closer. You see this massive rocky form in the foreground. Now the Axe-Cut Sun have given way first to lar from small to large Axe-Cut Sun, as they were supposed to be used in the works of painters like Ma Yuan, and then beyond that into something that is uh, big, broad brushstrokes, giving a kind of flickering, dramatic light and shadow effect. Uh, this is this is very definitely late Sun. The twisting of the trees, very unnatural. The um, the way the dian, or dots, clusters of dots, kind of hover on the edges of forms without really being attached to them. The next, please, here, going in. Yes, here is the, um, here is the uh, rocky mass. Well, you can't, if you know how, how art historical forms evolve, uh, you, um, you, you can see immediately that this is way, way beyond Li Tong and very different from Li Tong. Here, the next, please. Yes, here is the, the section with the figure in the distance, a traveler carrying some kind of large gourd-like thing on a pole over his shoulder. And look at these twisting trees and the way the, um, the uh, twigs and branches are sometimes somewhat detached from them. And the way these clusters of dots, not really dots, but strokes that are along the edges of the landscape forms at the middle right, uh, sort of hover over the forms and not, are not really attached to them. Okay, the next, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, this is even, even closer and you can see it better including this uh, figure. Okay, next, uh, the other one is a quite dramatic and wonderful painting of people gazing at the waterfall, a waterfall dropping in a rocky gorge, uh, and uh, quite wonderful light and shadow effects, uh, very dramatic and uh, whatever. Look at, the, look at the up top here with this great broad brush stroke. Well, this is a long way from, from Li Tong. Here down below, uh, next please, uh, up some trees here in the upper right, twisting trees again, and uh, one old tree down below with a very strangely twisting long uh, thing extending from it. Next, here is the uh, cliff with its face coming out toward us and broad, broad brush strokes taking us back on, uh, on both sides. Next, please. Here are the trees at the right of the waterfall, and you can see that the twigs are not really attached to the branches, 
and leaves and rather leaves, not leaves, okay. At any rate, it's done in a free and loose style, impressionistic, one is almost tempted to say. Uh, I'll take back the word, all right. Um, that belongs to the late song anyway. Here's the two people on the water, next to the waterfall. One of them, again, pointing at the waterfall, as I say, typically done. Look at this very strange tree at the right, which is, you can't imagine something like that in Li Tong, because we've seen Li Tong. And here is the waterfall itself, quite dramatic, and a fine painting, a big, big uh, rocky mass, of which you see the, the upper surface facing sort of upward and to the right is rendered only as streaks of white along the upper surface of these forms, as though you're seeing it at a very sharp angle, and the sun is striking on this upper surface, and then, you see, and then it moves toward the shadow, the dark, dark. Well, that derives from Li Tong, but derives over centuries, maybe two centuries, any a long time. All right, now that's enough for that. Now, we're going to go on, and I will talk some about followers of Li Tong. Followers of Li Tong in the 12th, early 13th century. This, um, I used to use this as a kind of textbook lesson in style history, as we used to practice it, and as I still believe in it, although it's by no means, it isn't popular anymore, it's hardly done by anybody. But the transition, the move, stylistic move, uh, art, historically, art historical move from Li Tong to later followers of his, uh, uh, with an artist named Jia Shi Gu, uh, marking a kind of endpoint, makes up a neat pattern of continuity and of devolution, the opposite of evolution, sort of downward movement, such as I tried to show already for the following of artists such as Fan Quan and Guo Xi. I showed works by their followers and showed how what begin as representational devices, elements of the style, style become mannerisms in the hands of the followers. Uh, anyway, this goes along for a while in the artist's I'll show, and then two great masters, Ma Yuan and Xia Gui, uh, coming along in the late 12th, early 13th century, transform this style and begin new phases in the history of landscape. And then we have the followers of Ma Yuan and so forth. The Chinese concept um, allows for this, the Chinese concept of movement from one artist to another. They use a term, ibian, one turn, one twist, as though, in other words, the uh, uh, style goes along for a ways, and then it is given a twist and sent off in a different direction by a major master. Um, this term is used for what the major masters accomplish, how they alter or redirect the tradition. This still falls within Gombrich's uh, basic pattern, matching and making and all the rest of it, but it's a more radical, creative, even transformative process. Uh, anyway, that's very interesting. But I will show now just the sort of straightforward devolution. Okay, here to begin with um, is a fan painting by um, an artist named Yen Ping. Yen Ping active in the 1160s to 1180s. Yen Ping and his brother, uh, Yen Yu, whose work I'll show also, are the subject of a very good article by Dick Edwards, Richard Edwards, in Ars Orientalis, volume 10, for 1975. Um, the, the, the two brothers were sons of Yen Zhong, who was himself an academy painter under Hui Zhong, uh, and followed Li Tong as a landscapist. And they, the two young ones, learned from their father. Hereditary lineages uh, were fairly common in the academy. The Ma's, Ma Yuan, Ma Lin, came from a family of Ma's who had worked in the academy, and the names, at least, of the others are known. Um, the um, uh, Yen brothers came to prominence uh, around 1163 under the Emperor Xiaozong, who was the second Southern Song Emperor. Uh, recorded paintings by Yen Ping are dated to 1181-1187, and are probably late in his life. I will put in here uh, later a section on buffalo and herd boy paintings attributed to him and talk about those. But meanwhile, for now, um, <clears throat> here's a fan painting. Um, title of uh, uh, the subject is Villa Among Pines by the River. Uh, this is um, in the uh, Palace Museum in Taipei, and it's in the Possessing the Past catalog 
uh, plate 85 where I discuss it at some length. Well, it's not so appealing, perhaps. It looks like just a sort of a uh, mass, uh, uh, dense mass crowded into the lower part of the painting, and then the rest is empty. Uh, what's so interesting about that? But as you look at it longer and see more in it and look harder, you find that um, you find that there's more going on, really. Uh, that it's more interesting than it, is, it seems at first glance. Okay, well, we'll see uh, details. Next, please. Uh, yes, here. Okay, the subject is a villa, a uh, group of buildings, somebody's retirement uh, uh, dwelling, or maybe a summer dwelling where you live when you're away from the capital anyway. Uh, built on the river, gaze, uh, looking out over the river, quite dramatically. A wonderful pine tree growing next to it. And <clears throat> when you begin to look in the details, you see down below here the place where the uh, boats visiting, people coming to visit this man, uh, arrive by boat the next place. Now here, uh, further up, is the, uh, you can see this dramatic pine tree, and also the cluster of buildings. It's built on a rocky uh, knoll or cliff or whatever by the river. And in fact, what would be the courtyard ordinarily is occupied by a huge rocky mass, which is nicely textured in exactly the Li Tong way. You can see the uh, sunny side and the darker side where the texture strokes are. And the building itself is uh, quite extensive with uh, galleries, walkways, a uh, terrace or balcony here on the left side with a, with a railing where people can stand and look out over the water. And on the far side, you can't really see it, but sort of understood there is uh, uh, open rooms where the, for, for gazing out over the river as one eats and drinks. And then the next, please, here, uh, as, as, in a kind of ideal narrative, one can, after, after eating, drinking, whatever, one makes his way, the two uh, main figures, let's say, the owner of the villa and his honored guest, make their way up this path to a ledge uh, with a railing around it up here under the pine trees. Uh, where they will sit and maybe uh, drink wine brought up by their servants and sit on these two uh, barrel seats, presumably ceramic seats, as, as you can see them. This is very common in Chinese paintings, uh, the indication of where people are going to sit and talk and gaze at the scenery. Okay, um, as I say, an ideal narrative. And then up here under the pine, we see more buildings, which are outbuildings of some kind or where the servants live, whatever. Okay, so it's really quite an interesting painting when you when you get into it and look at it more, and a lot is a lot is going on. All right, uh, <clears throat> then here Yen Su Yu was his brother, younger brother, and we have a work by Yen Su Yu, an album leaf. This is his name written in Chinese in the upper right here, um, in the Freer Gallery of Art. This is one leaf from a famous album. Uh, was brought together by a 17th century collector named um, Gang Zhao Zhong. Uh, anyway, and uh, part of it is in the Freer Gallery, a couple of leaves, and most of it is in the Palace Museum in in, uh, in Beijing. Okay, anyway, this is uh, this is a signed work by Yen Su Yu, and is uh, accepted generally as his work. And again, a painting with a um, with a, an implicit narrative. Uh, content, which uh, is is built into the painting. This, in this case, a more conventional narrative. Uh, in the lower left, the path comes in, goes over a bridge, and you see a traveler on the donkey in the usual way, and his servant carrying the luggage. And they're going to make their way along this path, up the bluff, through some bushes, and into this little cluster of buildings, like a small village, where undoubtedly there will be an inn, and a place where they can maybe stop overnight, rest the donkey and eat and so forth, and then continue the next day. Uh, the, the, the road going on is shown here at the middle left, middle right, I mean. Now, okay, among the Lee Tong elements you can see, look at this cliff up above in the right here, which has that uh, kind of stepped uh, uh, angular contour. 